Good morning, Metaverse. I'm Thor with the OCG and Mafia Guild, and today we are going to talk about some Isle ships. Huh? What does that mean? It means mobile, agile, and versatile. These ships can be played in a lot of different ways, and they're pretty good at most of them. So let's check out these athletes and get started. So the first athlete ship that we're going to look at is called the Calico Compact Hero. Now the Hero is origination price $3,520. And right now it is trading on the market for $2,185. So in comparison to some of the other ships, it has held its value better, but still it's significantly below its origination price. The Calico Hero is uh, 33 meters wide, 10 meters tall, and 39 meters long. It's got a captain, pilot, co-pilot, and an engineer. It is a medium class and is a multi-role. So it is very much uh, geared and the concept is multi-role. The major parts in the components that you should take a look at is really the hard points and so it has four medium hard points uh, so that is sort of on the the higher side of of hard points and so it's got a substantial amount of firepower behind it uh, the rest of it is all medium slot so it fits that class pretty well um, it doesn't have anything that is lacking um, or any smaller uh, slots and then in the modules it has a medium cargo and a small fuel slot so it has the ability to move around materials and and, and uh, participate in the cargo game loop um, and uh, you know that is definitely a way to play this ship um, one interesting thing about the calico hero specifically is that it is able to actually fit inside of a calico guardian one of the capital ships and there will be a link in the description below for the uh, episode about capital ships um, but that was kind of a, a neat little aspect uh, it can actually uh, fit directly inside of that one so um, to work together with the calico guardian um, that's a pretty cool concept and, and gives it a lot more versatility um, on top of it being an overall well-rounded ship. Now, the look of the Calico Guardian, or the Calico Hero, and, and the whole Calico uh, line is, is really sleek. And with some of these pictures, it gives you the cross-section to give a better idea of how this ship is laid out with the cockpit and the real open canopy. Uh, and then you have the different areas of this ship. You have the... the uh, cargo bay on the bottom and then you have more of the, the living quarters up top for the crew so it's it's laid out pretty nicely and definitely has uh, some clean looks in that so if you are a player that really likes to get the full breadth of space games and all the different game loops in those massive uh, universes and metaverses, then the Calico Compact Hero could be a really good one for you. It is a little bit higher price, so not financial advice, but um, this is one that uh, is still a, a pretty penny to, to pick up. So definitely think through how you're going to play this and um, how it's going to work with uh, perhaps your other ships or somebody else in your uh, group of people that you play with. So uh, that's the Calico Hero. The next one we're going to talk about is the Pierce F4. Oop. Hello, Donna. Um, you are not supposed to be there. Let's try this one. Ah, Pierce F4. Great. Now, this one is a medium class ship. It's considered a fighter ship. It says that it's a fighter ship, but let's take a look at this and I'll really show you how it's closer to a multi-role um, and has a lot of versatility to it. Now, it the origination price was 2500 and on the market right now, you can pick one up for $910. That's like a 63% discount. So that's pretty solid. Um, uh, as far as a reduction in in price from its origination price uh, and the origination price is what the profit or the uh, earning potential is based off of so uh, keep that in mind 
and it's got a captain, pilot, co-pilot, engineer, and a turret gunner. So it's got uh, the turret gunner aspect gives it, you know, in my mind, a little bit more to the firepower. And then you have in the components some interesting things here. You have two large slot hard points. All right, so two hard points, but they're large. Uh, so whether that's a little bit over power or under power from say uh, four medium hard points, um, it's it's hard to say right now. It might be a little bit less, but it has two missile bays, and so it's uh, still got substantial firepower. And then its impulse engine is also large, so it's it's got a larger engine to it. It should sublight travel much faster. Its warp drive is still medium slot, so it's not like a uh, the freighter ships that have you know big engines, big warp drives. Uh, this is the sublight engine. Um, so everything else is medium. But then you have a cargo slot, which is a medium cargo slot, and then a medium fuel slot. So the travel distance or the, the length uh, of time before you have to refuel is actually larger than some of the cargo uh, ships. Uh, and there's going to be a link in the description below for, for the, the one that I just did on the cargo uh, ships to kind of compare with these. And so it feels like something in between a fighter and maybe a, a cargo or a transport and we'll take a look at at some of the pictures to to get a better idea of this but it really looks like you know a troop transport it has that ability um, it doesn't have a brig uh, in the modules but um, you know it does have that feel of the pierce police force um, look to it it's subdivision here or its cross section uh, shows, you know, an area to, to sleep. You've got the uh, missile base down below and the cockpit. So really efficient uh, layout to this ship, and kind of feels like the dark horse uh, ship out of out of all these um, all the ships that have been released so far. You know, with the, the two heart, large heart slots and then two missile bays. So not really traditional way to get that firepower, but it definitely has it. Um, it's got the one turret gunner, so you have a whole uh, crew slot specifically for the firepower, while still having a full medium-sized cargo slot. Um, I, I just think it's uh, it's got a lot of potential. I picked up one. Um, I think it, it's definitely going to be very useful. Uh, in my personal fleet. So that's the Pierce F4. Definitely wanted people to know about that one. The next ship we're going to talk about is the Visus Opod. Now, the Visus Opod is a medium class ship as well. It is a data runner. So it, it definitely is a data runner, but there is so much to this ship that it kind of feels more of a multi-role. It definitely has versatility above and beyond just a data runner. So that's why I added it into this group. Um, right, or its origination price was 1,500. Right now it is on the market for about 746. That's the, that's a, uh, the cheapest I've seen it. Um, it is, uh, you know, relatively held its price uh, better than some ships, but still a significant discount from its origination price, uh, where its earning potential is is factored. Um, not a financial advice, but uh, I'm definitely looking at the Opod. I think if I were to pick up another ship, um, this one might be one that I put to my fleet. I don't have one right now, but I, I look uh, on it enviously from anybody that does. And so its components, there's some interesting things here. It has three hard points. So that's really kind of mid-range um, to, to its firepower. Um, it, it's not underpowered, I, I wouldn't say. Uh, so it can definitely defend itself, say in the hard or the high risk zone. Um, and, you know, it's not meant for straight up fighting, but um, it definitely has some firepower to it. Um, and then when the modules, the uh, one medium size data rack, for more information gathering. Um, so in the very beginning part of the games, going out and exploring and, and getting information on the different star systems and the planets, the different resources available, that is gonna be a very important 
uh, game loop to uh, be a part of. So early gameplay, uh, uh, the OPOD and other data running type ships are going to be very important to, for the development of the game and, and the progression of the, in, of the ecosystem. And so that's going to be very important. And then a drone ports, uh, having a medium drone port, those drones, I, I believe, will be able to be sent out and um, explore those planets and gather more data um, quicker. And so you're gonna be able to go on really deep missions into unexplored territory. And then, you know, you can sell that data. That's gonna be uh, how you really uh, make, make your um, returns, selling that data. Uh, it has a one smar a smuggle uh, cargo, one small smuggle cargo which it also has a cargo foreman as a crew slot. So uh, smuggling cargo, uh, getting it in and out of uh, different faction areas maybe. Um, the Opod has some unique ways to be used. Um, and, and I think that brings its versatility up uh, for having those unique use cases. And then it has a scanner, a small scanner slot for uh, you know increased sensing ability to, to collect that data. So it's very much a data um, runner type ship, but because there's so much more packed into the ship, I think uh, it's, it's overall versatility. You'd be able to use it in early game, and then maybe as more, the areas get explored and you want to switch it over to running some black market cargo, uh, you have the ability to do that. Um, definitely a, a in, as far as the game's concerned, game value, gameplay value, I think it's a very highly valued ship in its ability to, to do multiple things. So that's the Visus Opod, a beautiful ship. Take a look at some of these pictures. Um, and I believe this will be one of the first ships that you can see in the Unreal Engine 5 showroom uh, as that's coming out. And they've made uh, several... Um, suggestions that the the four to six week time frame is is on the table with that so we'll see uh, if that actually pans out but I'm definitely excited to be able to walk through the the opod and and take a look at it on the inside so I hopefully that was helpful video don't worry about liking subscribing screw the algorithm but if you know someone that would like it or who find it useful, please share it with them. And then check out the links below in case you want to join the, the Mafia Esports organization. I'm putting together a, a DAC for Star Atlas specifically. Uh, we're calling it the Red Hand. And the Red Hand is, is about the repair and rescue. I made a video which is, will be in the description below in regards to those types of ships. And in the future, the next couple videos, I'm going to do one on uh, the Order of the Red Hand, and I'm also going to do one on the Mafia, so you have a better idea of, of what that stuff means, and, uh, you know, I, I say, you know, good morning, I'm uh, Thor with the OCG and Mafia Guilds. I want to talk about the, the guilds and the organizations that, that I've been a part of and I think are, are really beneficial to the metaverse, to the crypto gaming space. Um, so you have some information there. So a couple videos uh, upcoming. Thanks for watching and we'll check you later.